perspective of composite fields for human pose estimation, CVPR 2019. Here is a result of uh, image that has been inputted to PFOP algorithm and it detects a human uh, poses from that image. Recently, there has been very uh, much work on uh, pose estimation and most of these pose estimations usually work with high resolution uh, images. But in this work, they tackle the challenge that arise in autonomous navigation setting, images with wide viewing angles and limited resolution on humans. And additionally, uh, high density crowds where pedestrians occlude each other. So they, uh, they, uh, they <clears throat> introduce PFPAF method, which is the bottom up methods for multi-person uh, 2D human pose estimations. In particular, this method is very well suited for urban mobility scenarios like self-driving cars and delivery robots. PFPAF uses uh, part intensity field to, lo to localize body parts for each body uh, joints. It predicts, it assigns confidence score, precise location, and size of the joint. Also, it has part association field, which associates body parts with each other to form full human poses. Uh, in the related work, there has been many work in pose estimations, and that we can divide them into two um, categories, top-down categories, which they estimate person's bounding box, and then uh, body parts or joints uh, within that bounding box. This method profits from the advancement in person detection algorithms, and there has a lot of data with bounding boxes. But they struggle when the bounding box coincide with each other. The other <clears throat> section is bottom-up method, which estimates body joints first and then groups them together. This method has been introduced in by Deep Cut in CVPR 2016. They solve key point association problem with an integer linear program. And the down down part of this method is they will process single image for a very long time. So the later method use this method and improve on the processing time and then extend this method to 3D pose estimation and pose estimation in videos. Here is overview of the architecture of the PIF path. <clears throat> so the, it has the ResNet as its uh, backbone and then it has um, PIF and PAF head networks with, uh, we'll talk about them later in this point. And also after encoding, there is decoder part, which uh, produces the poses and applies them to the image. So uh, first, uh, let's talk about composite field representation. These fields are very useful data structure to reason about structure on the top of the image. It combines multiple type of information into single representation, for example, scholars and vectors. We will show example later. By combining multiple type of information into single representation, it enables efficient computation optimization, more accurate estimation of human pose in challenging scenario, like crowded and occluded scenarios. <clears throat> so here you can see in the left, uh, the image A is confidence of the left shoulder. And in the middle, you can see the vector field showing the, di the location of the left shoulder. So when you put both of these together, you'll get image C, which is, <clears throat> which is composite field of scalars and vectors together. Part intensity field, which is used in this uh, network, is a technique you use uh, in human pose estimation that detects precise loca uh, a precisely localized body part. It uses a composite field representation that encodes the likelihood of the body parts being presented in each pixel location in an image. It composes of the scholar components, the confidence, and the vector components that points to the closest body part in that particular type and then another scalar component for the size of the joints. You can see the equation below. Uh, part association field stand uh, is technically used for human pose estimation that predicts the likelihood of two body parts being connected by a limb. Half uses composite field representation that encodes the likelihood of the 
limb connection between uh, different body parts. Also, this uh, path is composed, uh, composed of confidence, confidence core, two vectors that specify the direction and length of each limb connection, and two width parameters that control the spatial precision of the regression. The, path, uh, the vector in the path are used to associate candidate key points generated by PIF in full body poses. <clears throat> so here is the <clears throat> comparison between mid-range offset and part association field that uh, introduced in this paper. So in this image, the blue circle represents joints and confidence are marked in green. And as you can see, the, uh, the path will associate those four joints much better than the mid-range offset. Also, here's a visualization of the path that associates left shoulder with the left hip. Also, uh, when the path gives us all these outputs, we can uh, use some threshold or confidence and then get the best result. Also, in this method, they use adaptive regression loss. Adaptive regression loss is a technique used in human pose estimation to improve the localization ability of the network by injecting a scale dependency into the regression loss. The goal is to address the diversity of the scale that human pose can have in an image, which can cause localization error for joints of different sizes. They experiment using smooth L1 loss and Laplace loss. In the right, you can see the results that Laplace loss using B in the decoder uh, gives the highest result. Also, after detecting each key point, and they need to decode them into uh, an image as an output. So after PFAF operation, the decoder sets a new pose by selecting PIF's vector with the highest value in the confidence map. Starting from this seat, connection are added to other joints using paths, paths head network. The algorithm looks for nearly joints that have highest confidence score and connects them together using the corresponding path vector. Once a connection has been made between two joints, it becomes final and cannot be changed after changed later in the process. The algorithm continues adding connection between joints until all joints have been connected into a full human pose. Finally, once all poses have been estimated, they can be refined further using post-processing technique use such as non-maximum suppression, which can which has been used in other algorithms such as YOLO and so on. They experiment on data sets such as COCO, but uh, uh, since the aim of this method is to get an uh, algorithm that works well for wide range and low resolution image, they um, <clears throat> constrain the maximum image size of the COCO data, data set to 321 pixels. Yeah, as I said, this has been done for to simulate low resolution image which is more challenging for human pose estimation algorithms. Yeah, and also they use new scene data set. This data set already is collected by uh, self-driving cars and it has uh, several crowded uh, uh, scenarios and they, you don't need to change anything here. Also, uh, when they resize the images in COCO data set, they train other models on those and get the performance. This model, in, the model in this work are based on the base network pre-trained on ImageNet dataset, followed by custom sub-network with multiple heads. The training dataset consists of uh, 64,000 image, uh, COCO dataset with person annotation, and they use validation of COCO dataset. The base network used uh, in this method, our modified version of ResNet 15, ResNet 101, and ResNet 152. The head network consists of single layer, one, one by one sub-pixel convolution, the double, the double the special resolution. Data augmentation used during the training include cropping image, squares between 95% to 100% of the short edge, randomly selecting the location and occasionally using the entire image with added bars to make this, uh, it squares. Bicubic interpolation is used for resizing an image and annotation are randomly 
horizontally flip. The component of the field are trained with independent binary cross entropy loss, L1 loss and Laplace loss respectively. During training, the running statistic of batch normalization operation are fixed to their pre-trained value and SGD optimizer with a learning rate of 10 to the power of minus three, momentum of 0 0.95 and the base size of eight is used. No weight decay is applied. The, the training time for 75 epoch of ResNet 101 on um, <clears throat> GTX GPU is approximately 95 hours. Here is the result uh, result of this method and comp comparison, compare, comparing it with other methods. So they apply pose estimation to low resolution image with a long side equal to 321 pixels for top down and bottom up methods. As you can see, the PFAP outperformed nearly all of those with a low resolution image, which is, um, which is the idea of this paper. Here is a qualitative result. As you can see, open pose and mask RCNN have some problem with, uh, with the images. The first, the first one, open pose predict uh, extra um, key points, which is not there. But, and also they miss some of the persons in the image. But PFAF detects all of them correctly and do not produce any abundant uh, poses. Also, here is the result of the mask RCNN and the PFAF in the crowded region. So uh, in the right side, where you can see the bounding boxes, those are uh, detected by PFAF, but not the mask RCNN. And as you can see, it's a lot. The further the person go, the more the mask RCNN misses, but the PFPAF detects. Also in the left side, you can see metrics in person evaluated in COCO test uh, data set uh, with normal resolution without uh, making it limited resolution. Even though with a high resolution, PFPAF almost outperform all of the met all uh, of the other methods in the right side you uh, right side you can see the um, running time of the um, pfav network so in the second row which is the best which has the best uh, trade off between accuracy and the time uh, and also in inside the parentheses, you can see the result uh, of person lab method. So the PFPAF has the be better uh, tra uh, trade off between um, <clears throat> accuracy and running time. Thank you.